this tutorial will be focusing on adrenocorticotropic hormone, which is secreted by the anterior pituitary. This is a relatively long named hormone, so we will abbreviate it as ACTH. The general functions of ACTH include releasing cortisol from the adrenal gland, which has a positive effect on increasing circulating blood glucose, and an indirect effect of darkening the skin. We will begin by following a flowchart diagram that explains the secretion of the different hormones related with ACTH. I'm going to begin by illustrating my hypothalamus and my pituitary gland. Blood glucose levels, when they diminish, are a trigger for the release of a hormone from the hypothalamus, which is corticotropic releasing hormone. When corticotropic releasing hormone is secreted, this is going to move along the blood vessel system to the anterior pituitary, where we will release adrenocorticotropic hormone. This hormone is going to target two tissues. First of all, the adrenal cortex. The adrenal cortex is the location at which cortisol is produced and stimulation of the adrenal cortex by adrenocorticotropic hormone causes an increase in cortisol secretion. Increasing cortisol has an effect to ultimately increase both fats and proteins metabolizing. This works out very well to ultimately increase blood glucose levels. This helps us get back to homeostasis. In addition, the hypothalamus will be detecting circulating levels of cortisol. And when cortisol decreases in the bloodstream, it also causes the release of corticotropin releasing hormone. This again stimulates the adrenal cortex to increase cortisol secretion and that cortisol secretion ultimately increases cortisol and help us get back to the appropriate amount of circulating cortisol. But remember the indirect effect of darkening skin. ACTH also affects melanocytes by causing an increase in activity our result is darker skin cortisol itself is an inhibitor and the cortisol can turn down or off the anterior pituitary as well as turning off the corticotropic releasing hormone. So this helps to inhibit the release. In addition, adrenocorticotropic hormone itself, as it elevates, is detected by the hypothalamus and again turns off the corticotropin releasing hormone. For each of the hormones, we will be learning whether they are a protein or lipid-based hormone. The corticotropic releasing hormone is a peptide-based hormone, which means it's a very small uh, amino acid hormone. This is going to be metabolized relatively quickly from the body. The cortisol, however, 
is a lipid-based hormone. And the lipid-based hormones are going to have broad effects. Next, we will consider pathologies related to hypo and hyper secretion of cortisol. When there is an issue with the hypothalamus or the pituitary gland and we do not secrete adequate amounts of ACTH, cortisol levels begin to fall. This ultimately is going to cause a weakened immune system, but this is an indirect effect. A patient suffering from hyposecretion will also demonstrate a loss of appetite, might complain of nausea, and vomiting. Overall, the blood glucose levels are going to be hypoglycemic. This individual will also be losing weight. And in addition, we'll see lighter skin. With hypersecretion, we are again going to see a weakened immune system, but this is a direct effect from cortisol's function of inhibiting the immune system response. This individual is going to have too much blood glucose and be hyperglycemic. Their skin will darken from increased melanocyte activity. And fat deposits will begin to accumulate, particularly in the face, as well as over C7 on the back of the shoulders. This gives a very characteristic deformation of a moon face and a buffalo hump. In addition, concerns with prolonged use of cortisol or elevated amounts of cortisol are thin skin. Remember that anytime we're looking at blood glucose levels going down, this is a stress response of the body to either physical stress or a perceived psychological stress. This completes the tutorial on adrenocorticotropic hormone.